Hey guys, so if I were to say the phrase, look up table, um, that might be rather ambiguous as to what I'm talking about. If you were to say, for instance, Google look up table, uh, you would find a variety of applications to that phrase that mostly have to do with data management. I believe the first look up table was like a logarithm book. If you recall, if you're taking trigonometry, um, you know, it's like your logarithm table here uh, you might recall seeing things like this or or seeing a picture an image of this as a, sort of a, a method of keeping track of logarithms um, that are applicable in things like trig or calculus and things like that the idea being that essentially what a lookup table is is just a collection of data a data array as it were a, a collection of, of values that you can then reference uh, in order to save time um, from dealing with uh, details of certain calculations and stuff. Um, but, a, uh, but a lookup table, when it comes to color correction, um, is somewhat the same. Essentially what it is is just a kind of list of values that apply to the different color channels. And there are different methods uh, that Photoshop uses and other Adobe applications use in order to uh, kind of apply the concept of a color lookup uh, and uh, lookup table. And uh, it's all it's all uh, fairly um, fairly straightforward. Uh, all it is is just simply a file that's in your in your data that you can then apply to a variety of photos. So I've found uh, just several photos that are not related whatsoever in Photoshop. So for instance, here's uh, one here of a bride and a, a groom, and here's one of a, of a skate park. Let's open that up. I'll just open up all these. They all have vaguely different uh, color um, schemes here. And I'm going to open up this little fox that I found because it also has a somewhat different color scheme here. And uh, if you were to go to your adjustments layer, let's go ahead and keep this locked for now, um, and go to our adjustment layer and find color lookup, um, you'll see a this little dialog box pop up and uh, you'll you'll notice we have 3D LUT, 3D LUT file. LUT is the sort of shorthand for lookup table, so I'm just going to be using the phrase LUT from here on out. Essentially you have the option of choosing a variety of preloaded lookup tables that uh, apply a variety of different looks to them. Some are somewhat subtle, uh, basic sort of curve adjustments. Uh, some are rather um, uh, dramatic with uh, with not only um, not only color adjustments but also what seem to be gradient masks applied to them or gradient maps applied as well. Um, you've got a variety of of uh, uh, file extensions here, 3DL, LOK, Cube, all these various things, and then you got maybe some some terms that might seem somewhat familiar to you in terms of uh, in terms of these little things here. Now, like I always say, it's uh, it's it's one thing to know what a tool is, uh, but it's another thing to kind of understand sort of how it works. And and we're going to explore. We won't get into the real nitty gritty in terms of uh, of, of the of how it. Um, how these things really like kind of uh, reference different values and what precisely those values might be. Uh, but we will kind of talk about how we can create our own LUT, our own sort of look um, that we would like here. So I'm just going to choose one random um, one here. I'm going to choose uh, this, um, I'll choose this this late sunset. This is kind of nice. As you can see, this is basically a, um, uh, just, just a, a basically just a gradient map with a little bit of a added brightness here. Now like everything else, you can adjust this with like a layer mask. You can take your layer mask, you can paint over it if you wanted to. Uh, you could take your uh, blending options and you could maybe maybe change it to uh, color or um, let's think here, uh, color dodge or color burn maybe lighter color, something like that. Or you could uh, adjust the fill and tweak the, the appearance of it. So for instance here, in this case, I don't know if it does a whole lot of difference when it's on a lighter color. Let's look at overlay, something like that. And then you could kind of adjust the fill to make it a little less uh, intense, you know, things like that. Uh, but if I were just to keep this, for instance, um, uh, normal, and have this there, you would notice that some of these things basically do the same thing even though they have different uh, different kind of color schemes to them. So I'll just look color look up here and I'll just uh, load up um, the uh, late sunset and if we just kind of compare these two 
um, we can see that they, they tend to have the same sort of uh, pale orange and uh, dark deep purple look to them. So this is somewhat dramatic here. Color look up. I'll, I'll bring up the um, bring up the late sunset here. We can kind of see the same sort of thing. Some of these things, um, like everything else, uh, can be applied in different ways, and some look better than others. But uh, but let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and take my look up my, my LUT off for these two, and let's do some experiments. So find a find a picture that you like. Uh, let's get rid of some more time here. Find a picture that you like on Pixabay. <clears throat> In fact, find find two other two two other find three pictures that you like on Pixabay. And here's what we're gonna do: find the one whose colors you like the most, and let's do some adjustments to them. I'm gonna just apply two different things to them. I'm gonna apply a curves layer to them, a curves adjustment layer to them. I'm gonna keep this background locked. I'm gonna apply a curves adjustment layer to it. So let's find my curves, and I'm just going to bring up the highlights and bring down the uh, shadows and you can use these little arrows down here to bring the what we call the black line and the white line uh, you can move those around I'm gonna take my red I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cool this off a good deal by bringing the highlights of the red down and I'm gonna cool this off by bringing the shadows of the reds down as well and I'm not sure if I really enjoy how green it is so I'm just gonna pull the mid-tones of the greens down like this, which is going to make it a little bit more red than I want it to be, so I'll pull it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my blues and I'll pull the shadows of the blues up a little bit. And I'll pull, I'll pull the highlights of the blues down some just to give it some warmth. All right, okay. So I'll do that and that'll be how I do this. And then I'll take my gradient map and I'm going to lay down, say for instance, some more blues, maybe even. I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. So let's add a gradient map and let's add a uh, curves adjustment layer to it. And hopefully we can kind of see how these things behave uh, with, with the application of these things here. So I'll just uh, pull this out here. I'll make this a bit darker and a little less saturated. Drag down some more. Okay. Press OK, and I'm just going to take this fill down some. Yeah, maybe leave it there. Say like 30% or so. Let's take a look and see the difference here. Um, maybe I'll take the fill down some more, maybe like 10%. Okay, so the idea of the lookup table is essentially it's going to sort of examine all the pixels in this image. And it's going to take a sampler of the different colors that it sees, and it's going to create uh, an adjustment layer that's going to reflect the changes that were made in here. Now, um, we're going to see how this affects the other two pictures here. So like I said before, if, if we see this, uh, this sort of lookup table, and we see it apply to a variety of things, then we can, um, then we can maybe see how this works in, in different ways on different pictures here. So let's go ahead and go to File, and let's go to Save. And let's save this with a with a name that's going to be sort of uh, maybe indicative of what we're looking at here. So in this case, I've got blue gradient map and I've got some curves. So I'm going to, I don't know what I'd call this. I might call this, um, let's look at, at LUT experiments here. I'll call this um, maybe blue wedding just to name it, just so I can kind of think about what I'm what I'm looking at here. And I'll press OK. And then in order to access the LUT file, I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to say Color Lookup Tables, and I'm just, it's going to have my little blue wedding name there. And if you were a, you know, designer who, or photographer who, who experimented this a lot, uh, then, um, then you could, uh, you know, you could copyright this. But as far as grid points go, I'm just going to choose medium. Uh, if you go too high, it's not going to, it might not work because of, uh, of, of the RAM requirements. And I'm going to uncheck all the different boxes and just leave cube um, available for now. And I'll just press OK. And this might take a second. It's going to give me the option here. And I'll just press save. And as you can see, it samples the various things. And let's take a look and see what happens here. So over in here, this little guy here, I'm going to get my new adjustment layer. I'm going to choose color lookup. And I'm going to load my 3D LUT. I'm going to just click on load 3D LUT. 
I'm going to find my blue wedding cube file that I made and behold it kind of has the same little look to it you know and because the colors are a little bit different it uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't quite have the same you know the exact same effect but the same thing kind of can be can be said for the other ones uh, and then we'll try that one more time we'll go to color lookup and we'll go to low 3d LUT. I'll choose my blue wedding cube and uh, it looks kind of neat. We have this same sort of effect uh, that's uh, sort of thrust onto different ones, and it looks better on some than it does on others, and uh, and that's uh, essentially what this is. So what I want you to do is I want you to, let's make a little uh, color, uh, little photo spread here. Let's go to um, new, and I'm just gonna create a, just a, a random you know rectangle. I may just choose a, like the, on, under print, a letter file here. I'm going to say at the top here, color lookup table, and maybe change my text from white to maybe black. And what we'll do is we'll place the, the files that we used for this. We'll just place those here. So I got my LA, and I'll shrink that down. I'll just put my originals on one side. And my lookups on the other side. Let's uh, let's find the uh, bridal one here. Grab that. Just uh... okay. And then I'll find my fox here. I see that might be in downloads. Let's find this. Oops. And I'll just make sure my name's on here. Goodness. Okay, and so obviously the next step is to then grab our edited versions of this. So I'll just um, uh, what I'll do is I'll rearrange this to have the um, the the one that I actually adjusted on the top here. So let me just pull this off to the side. I'll pull this here. Grab my fox. Grab this guy. Yeah, there's a uh, actual an alignment tab here if you're in um, if you're in the uh, essentials. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, pull over these guys. I'll just make a new layer here. Oops, make a new layer. Control, Control Alt, Shift and E, and I'll just drag this layer over here. Get a little bit smaller. Make the same size. And uh, you'll just compare them side by side. So what I want is I want this uh, this image here, this little photo spread that we're what we're creating. Um, same deal as before. Let's um, let's make sure that we're lining everything up. New new folder here. New file. Alt Shift D. New layer other. And we can kind of compare and contrast, and maybe look at the different similarities of our color lookup table that we created. And uh, finally, the fox. And just drag this guy in here. So again, your three pictures will be, you know, decidedly different from mine, because you're just going to choose the files that you thought were fun, that you thought were nice. Okay. And um, what we can do here is, uh, we'll say this is a JPEG. Let me just real quick crop this down so it's all even on either side. Let's crop this just to make it presentable. Okay. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to both submit this file here as well as the LUT file that you saved uh, to the Dropbox. So let me show. Let me see what you what you created here, uh, and then let me see what you um, what you. Uh, are, or like we see you create and then they give me the opportunity to actually um, 
as you see what's uh, what what file that you produced as well. So that's essentially the long and short of the color lookup table. The color lookup table is essentially just a shortcut in order to apply a look to your picture that you've decided that you enjoy. So if you if you tend to skew towards cooling your pictures down and dropping their saturation and adding a gradient map and a variety of things, if you tend to make your pictures warmer, if you enjoy the look of a little more reds and yellows as opposed to blues and greens, uh, you know, you can, you can isolate those and you can save those as basically a preset that you can then apply to any image you like and just save yourself the time by by going to these these lookup tables by going to the the, the color lookup option on your adjustment layers. So that's what uh, the the LUTs are, and this applies to both uh, video editing and applies to um, uh, graphic design, photo editing, and also applies to things like video streaming, video game uh, design, software design, design of your monitors, and, and a variety of other, other things. So that's a that's I think just a real powerful tool. Um, just to just to be familiarize yourself with. All right, so very cool. So turn in this right here as a JPEG, and then turn in the .cube file that you created, uh, and uh, submit that to the Dropbox. All right, well, can't wait to see you guys produce. See you in class.